Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to go through the directives for creating context-sensitive hotkeys and hot strings, and I'm going to be covering all five of these today. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. Let's get started. So directives are the ones that start with the hashtag, and in today's video, we are going to cover the directives that start with the hashtag and if. I did cover if when active in my previous video where I talked about how to create context sensitive hotkeys and hot strings and the subsequent three are very similar to that. And so these four I will go through today very quickly and focus on the last one which is a little bit more interesting. So directives look like this and by itself it doesn't really do anything. So this basically means if when active the win title this can be obviously anything else like the title of the window or the process name and etc etc. This doesn't do anything like I said. You need to have a hotkey created inside to say I'm gonna make it display a message box that says notepad is active and the key is gonna be A. Got a return here and you've got to close this directive out with a, another one of those but without the win title because if you don't do that, then another hotkey that you create underneath is going to be affected by that. So if you don't have the closing directive, then it's going to, this is going to affect this one as well. All right. Okay. So, and underneath, let's say I'm going to create using the same key to display another message box that is different. Okay. So I've got two hotkeys using the same key. And if I go ahead and run it and launch notepad, while my active window is notepad like this, if when active, auto hockey class notepad, when I press A, it's going to show me the message box that says notepad is active. If I click elsewhere, change my focus to visual studio code and press the hotkey, it's going to say notepad is not active. So that's the basics of how context sensitive hotkeys can be created. If you want to use multiple directives and use multiple criteria for win title, you can do something like this. If win active, untitled notepad with a star sign in front, that means your notepad is not saved. Auto hockey class notepad. So that is the title of the window and that's going to be the class of the notepad, right? And so you've got multiple criteria for win title and that's how you can create a directive with multiple criteria. Subsequently, we have a directive that uses only one criterion. Okay, you have to make sure that this doesn't sit on top of here because the script is going to be read from the top to bottom. And so whenever you have a notepad window open and activated, it's going to run this one first. It's going to prioritize this hotkey first instead of this one. And therefore, you've got to put more stringent criteria on the top of the script and then followed by the looser ones. And I can also add another hotkey using the same key um, that works outside of the notepad. So if I go ahead and run this, bring up my notepad and then press the hotkey A. It's going to satisfy this if when active directive and it's going to show me that notepad is active. If I put the focus elsewhere and press it, it's going to say notepad is not active. If I type something out, then the title of this notepad window is going to match this one right here. And therefore, when I press the hotkey A, while my focus is on this notepad, it's going to say edited notepad is active, which is this message box. So that's how you use multiple directives as well as use multiple criteria for the win title. If win not active is the opposite of if win active. I don't think I need to show you this. This basically means if win not active, auto hockey class notepad. So anything other than notepad is activated, then you activate this hotkey. So whenever you press this hotkey, then it's going to show this message box. Else meaning if auto hockey class notepad window is activated. So this is going to only run when the notepad class window is activated. So that's the opposite of if win active directive. And if win exists is just like if win active, except that it's checking whether a window that matches your win title 
does exist or not and therefore and therefore it will run this hotkey if it does exist on your windows if it doesn't then it's going to run this hotkey instead and so right now i don't have any notepad windows open so if i go ahead and run it and press the a hotkey then it will say notepad does not exist which is this message box right here but if i do launch a notepad and run the hotkey again then it's going to say notepad does exist now it's at least one window that matches the win title so if you have more than one then you need to close all of them in order for this if win exist to be failed to be met all right and if win not exist is the exact opposite of that so if the notepad window or the untitled dash notepad window does not exist then you run this hotkey else you run that hotkey i won't be showing you this this is pretty straightforward now moving on to the if expression so if expression is basically like all the other ones that i've shown you just now except that we are creating a condition of our own so in terms of the basic concept we've got the if directive followed by this bit this is a function it can be anything else you can call it does one equal one and that's going to be true and when that's true that's going to be met and therefore the hotkey is going to run this one instead of this one out there so i've got a slightly trickier example here where it uses a function and passing two arguments one and two into this function right here and so the arguments that i have passed one and two are going to be converted into a and b I'm doing a summation of a and b and assigning the result 3 into the variable c and i am checking whether c equals 3 which is going to be true and that true value is going to be assigned to this variable and return that variable up to here so when it returns that true or false is indeed true this if statement will be met and therefore when this if statement is met it will launch this hotkey when i press the numpad zero instead of this one so if i go ahead and run it and press numpad zero it's going to say yes true right but if i change this value in the argument to three and therefore c becomes four and that doesn't meet this requirement then it's going to run this message box instead so it will say no not true in this case all right so that's how the if directive basically works so you can then create something like this one which equates this if win active you've got if win active autoarchy class notepad if your active window is autoarchy class notepad then you will run this hotkey else you're going to run that and that is exactly the same as if win active okay so what can we do with the if directive then we can create a context sensitive hotkey that is more complicated than just having a particular window active or in existence so for example we can use the mouse is over function which is down here to check whether the window that sits underneath our mouse cursor does meet the window that we want or not and activate the hotkeys based on that so for example we've got the if directive here and the mouse is over which is a function and we're feeding down water hockey class shell underscore tray window as the argument and that is basically the task bar and when we look at this function win title is the variable that receives the auto hockey class task bar class and we run the mouse get pause command within the mouse is over function in order to get the unique id of the window that sits underneath the mouse cursor and assign that id into the win variable and return the result of the win exist function which utilizes both of win title which is going to be the taskbar class combined with the autoarchy id and the unique id of the window that sits underneath the cursor at the time of running this command so let me just show you in a tooltip the result of what we get as and when we run the hotkey so if we go ahead and run it so the purpose of this hotkey is so that when you have the mouse cursor on top of your task bar when you do a will up it will send the volume up key when you do a will down it will send the volume down key and this basically adjusts the uh, volume of your pc using the will 
mouse wheel only when your cursor is on top of the taskbar. So if you have the window or the mouse cursor, sorry, on top of other windows, this is not going to adjust the volume. However, when you do it on top of the taskbar, it will push up or push down the volume in this manner. Now, you saw when my mouse cursor is not on the taskbar. And if I run the hotkey, then it's still going to show me the tooltip. However, this is a null value. This is a null value, meaning this has not been met. This if statement is not met. And that is because we are particularly looking for the win title that uses auto hockey class shell underscore tray window, which is this taskbar. And so only when we have the mouse cursor on top of the taskbar, it will return a tooltip that is not a null value, not a zero value. And therefore you see the volume being updated when I move the mouse wheel up or down. So that's how you can create a little bit more complicated context sensitive hotkey using the if directive. And to take this further, you can create a script like this, which I'm going to upload onto my website as per the usual. And so I'm not going to explain this line by line because it would take it would take a little bit of time. So if I go ahead and run this and demonstrate to you what this does, it does similar things as it does with the previous script, except that this will decrease and increase the transparency of the taskbar as I do a wheel down and wheel up like that. So it's basically a similar thing as before, except that we're using the wind get and the wind set transparent in order to set the transparency of the taskbar. If you want to do this for other windows, not just the taskbar, then here is another script that I have written. Again, this is going to be uploaded onto my website. And this time I'm not using just the wheel up because wheel, wheel up and wheel down will be used in many different windows. And so I've got the shift key and alt key together with the wheel up and down when my mouse is over anything and therefore I passed no argument in here. So if I rerun the script and while pressing the shift key and alt key and if I do a wheel down then this is going to decrease the transparency of my taskbar and increase when I do a wheel up and this is going to be applied to other windows as well. So for example this folder that I just launched it will decrease the transparency up to a transparency of five so you can still see it vaguely it's not going to be clicked through it's going to be clicked on the window and that's because if you drop the transparency to zero you're not going to be able to retrieve it or increase the transparency without another command that does it instead of this will up hotkey because you're not going to have that identified by the mouse is over function and so there's a minimum transparency here of visibility here as you can see you can still see it and you can do it on the visual studio code as well like that and then make it go more visible in this manner all right so let me get out of this script and lastly i'm going to show you how you can create more than one condition for the directive and that's basically just going to use the double ampersand sign. So here I've got an example that uses the if directive and I've got a pair of parentheses in order to enclose two conditions. So I've got mouse is over, which I haven't copied over. So here is a function mouse is over. If my mouse is over the notepad class window as well as the active window is notepad window then I'm going to use this mouse left button right button and will up and down to send these strings accordingly so the benefit of this is that if you say for example um, if I take this out and just run this then these hotkeys will run when my mouse is over on my notepad window so if I shift my focus to visual studio code and then do say a left button click onto the notepad, then this string is going to be sent to my Visual Studio code 
instead of my notepad window. I need to put the focus on my notepad window in order to uh, send it to my notepad window. So what I have to do is go back and put that other condition in. And so in this case, only when I have the notepad window activated like that by doing a click, when I do run the hotkeys, I will have the strings being sent to the notepad in this manner. So this is how you can create multi-conditional if directive hotkeys. So this is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.